And coming up on today's All American People with me, Jack Murphy, filling in for Greg Everett. And Greg, we may have saved the best for last on today's broadcast. Have you heard the phrase par for the course? Well, can you imagine being out on the LPGA but having to deal with arthritis? Par for the course? I don't think so. Kristen McPherson's our guest on All American People. Well, hello there. Welcome to All American People. We're going to talk a little bit of golf, which always makes me nervous when I'm close to this much water, because if I were playing golf, I'd find it. You ever have days like that, Christy? Some days are like that, unfortunately. It just Hopefully, goes right uh, to not, it. Not too many, though. Welcome to All American People. Well, thank you. Good Thanks to for see having you. Me. You know, you got out of high school at a relatively uh, young age, in, in my book. 1999, you graduated? 1999, so I've been out uh, a few years now. Just a few. Just a few. And you know, the sad thing, or it's a good thing, uh, I had been in the area for 10 years, and so was doing River Talk before you got out of high school. And so here we are that on All American. you're getting American. old, too. Yeah, I'm getting up there. <laughs> I am. I didn't pick up the game of golf, though, until I moved here. That's understandable. And, uh, kind of hard not to play golf in I, I maybe shouldn't have picked it up. Uh, <laughs> the game didn't get, get that better through the years, but it, it, it got to be a lot more fun. How about you? When did you get out on the golf course first time? I've been playing golf pretty much my whole life. Like I said, uh, growing up here in Conway, uh, close to Myrtle Beach, it's, uh, it's hard not to play golf. So right. my dad was a great player. and. Uh, you got us all involved with Myrtle Beach Junior Golf. Uh, sure. Wasn't my favorite sport to start with, but, uh, you know, ended up playing in high school, got a college scholarship, kept going, and, uh, you know, wasn't ready to quit playing, so uh, still still, still trying it. That's kind of neat that, that a dad took, took his daughter out to the golf course. Yeah. yeah. We you have, uh, I grew up on the baby of four, so two older brothers and older sister, and uh, all of us uh, were involved with Myrtle Beach Junior Golf for a while. And, sure. Uh, Sister didn't last very long, and then two brothers and I, we played together a lot, and, uh, you know, one of them uh, still coaches golf, so uh, definitely a golfing family and uh, definitely uh, in, our, in our blood. Now, we're out there playing, and i got to ask this, and this may sound kind of weird. Did your dad have you play from the regular tees that he was playing on, or did you get, like, the break or play for, for Oh, I never got a break, so yeah. we always okay. played with the boys, good. play with the boys in high school, play with the boys in the money games, and, uh, you know, always played their tees if I was going to... If I was going to play with them, I was playing their tees. They weren't stopping at the red tees for me. So, but uh, but that made me made me better throughout the years, and uh, sure. it made it even even a lot more fun when uh, I got to take their money playing their own tees. Unbelievable. <laughs> How old were you when you first went out there? I mean, you, you got into junior golf, but, but at what age? Yeah, I got in uh, probably I was probably eight. So when I started wow, playing, okay. started playing junior golf, and uh, like I said, we played you know every every sport we could as as a family, and uh, so we were we were busy all the time, and. Uh, you know, golf was uh, was a great time during the summer, and uh, always go out and play the little junior events and, and go to clinics and stuff. But uh, but yeah, it was just uh, you know a game you, that you're never going to get it right. You're never going to be perfect, and right. uh, I'm uh, so competitive and uh, so stubborn that uh, keep trying every day until you get it right. Did you? You obviously had natural talent, but you said it wasn't your favorite sport. I mean, was that something you wrestled with? I mean, you you, you knew you were good out there, but yeah, I mean, junior golf. I mean, I was you know. A I guess I was pretty good, you know, but I mean, every every kid gets a trophy, every kid's good, you know, so, sure. um, but yeah, I enjoyed the team sports more, you know, uh, you know, it was fun playing in high school golf and, and college golf, but I uh, enjoyed uh, basketball and baseball, I loved playing baseball with the boys and anything you can yell and scream and, and jump and run around in was uh, was more my type, but uh, but ended up sticking with golf in the end. Where's the first golf course you, you, you pretty much called your home course or yeah. um well i played a little golf course in Nichols, south carolina pineland country club i know i never uh, played there but yep we, we drove there uh a lot of times we'd leave at you know six o'clock in the morning on and during the summers friday saturday and sundays and uh go over there and and play uh sometimes we play 54 holes a day just keep playing and Get uh drive back so we drive uh you know 45 50 minutes over there every weekend my dad and brothers and i would of all the golf courses around here, you'd head out to Nichols. That's where a lot of people. Hey, when you can get you know 40 guys on the on the tee in the morning and uh, get a good game up and uh, have a good time, it was yeah. uh, it was definitely uh, you know what I would consider my home course at the time. Uh, I wouldn't say it was you know the best golf course in sure. the Myrtle Beach area, but uh, it's where we had the most fun and uh, where we had the, the most friends out there. When high school uh, came in, in, in into play, I mean, did you know you were going to play? Uh 
golf in high school or? Yeah, I mean, Conley High School, you know, never had a, a, a girls team at the time. Sure. So my brother played on the men's team and, and uh, you know, and another girl in the area, Carrie Dameron, was playing golf. And mm -hmm. uh, so we both said, well, we'll try out for the team and uh, made the team and uh, started getting a little better each each year. And, and towards, uh, you know, junior, senior year, I uh, actually got pretty good and started getting uh, looks from, from colleges and mm -hmm. uh, just, you know, stuck with it. And you stuck with it because you're stuck saying, okay, man, this is going to take me somewhere now. It, it's uh, yeah, it take me somewhere. Help mom and dad out with the, you know <laughs> college scholarship and uh, you know with them you know, playing uh, golf as a junior is not cheap, especially when you have more than one doing it. So uh, yeah. you know they made a lot of sacrifices to to allow us to play and uh, to be able to uh, get a full ride to college was uh, you know a little help for them. And now, uh, where'd you attend college? University of South Carolina. That's so a good one right there. there yeah, you go. yeah, so yeah, I, I can't say go. game coach. Oh, I just did. <laughs> you know, my tie to the game coach is Ray Tanner, baseball coach. Yeah. Grew up a couple of doors down from him. Okay. I don't good know how his golf game is. Good I don't guy. Know, I've he, actually never played with him. We played a lot with the baseball guys when we yep. were when we were in school, especially the pitchers. They don't have to pitch very often, so they can yeah. play golf with us. Good. But uh, but yeah, most of the pitchers were really good. I'm not hey, sure how Ray is, was. That up. is strange because when you see like the pro ams on television, all these retired baseball guys usually have pretty good golf game. I don't know if it's the baseball <laughs> swing or what. And mostly pitchers do. Like I said, when you yeah. pitch one out every five days, and you have uh, some downtime, and you're not you know not allowed to throw too much, and uh, so a lot of them go out and play golf is one sport that you know, hopefully you can't get hurt at so you know they're not gonna be running around playing basketball too much so right yeah get on the golf course well how was how was the college game different than high school I mean were you mentally is it is it preparing for for a match different at um, the college level no I mean obviously it's, it's a little different when you're playing for your university and, mm -hmm. and for your state and uh, but you know I was finally on a girls team, so I still right. played on the on the men's team all through high school. So that was a little different, but uh, but yeah, I mean you had the I mean there's you know we were student athletes. You had to figure out how to do the schooling and and how to have all your stuff done by the time we had to leave you know Wednesday afternoon and uh, sometimes Thursday whatever. But you know we'd miss you know a lot of classes, so sure. you had to had to figure out how you're going to do it and keep up with that and still uh, you know have enough time to to practice and to be prepared when you went out to an event. Yeah, it, it, being a student athlete, and everyone looks at the athlete side of things first. <laughs> uh, it's tough. It's tough. It's a lot of work. It's a definitely lot of work. student. You know, is there for a reason first, and it's uh, they're not going to let you play unless you do your work in the classroom. You know, and uh, and so I mean that's uh, it's definitely you know time management, a balance of of all it, and you have to uh, figure out. You know, it's a lot of work to to put in the practice that you need in golf to, like I said, be prepared when you hit the road and uh, still have your stuff done in the classroom as well. What, what's, the, what's the trip back to Columbia? You, you're out there and you, you, you maybe didn't perform on the road as well. and uh, what, You beat yourself up? No, it's, uh, you know, we always, uh, we either, you know, took the van, drove if it was within, you know, eight hours or so, or mm -hmm. we'd fly. And, uh, you know, as a, as a team, that's the cool part about it. You know, I mean, you think you feel, Worse if you didn't play well and, and let your team down, but uh, you know everybody. You know you have four other teammates around you, and mm -hmm. that's uh, you know there to pick you up. And that's that's I had a tendency to get a little tough on myself. I played number one all four years, so obviously there's a lot of pressure on me to sure. hopefully you know be the lowest score in, or definitely to be you know a uh, score that you're on count. You count the four best scores in college. So um, so yeah, I mean it was always you know a little bit of pressure, but I enjoyed that and always wanted to play well. For, for myself, for the teammates, for the school. Sure. Had to be an incredible uh, pleasure for you, you yeah. know, g g coming back home and, and getting input and stuff from, because, I mean, we, you were making the newspaper, we're seeing you on TV, <laughs> we're hearing about you. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, it's, uh, it's fun. Even now, you know, after college, um, and I've been playing professionally for eight years now wow. so um, five years on the LPGA and uh, you know it, it's a lot of fun to, to uh, still you know be able to represent South Carolina be able to represent the Conway area and uh, you know to go out and play and I and, uh, got to play in Solheim Cup in 2009 I got to represent the United States and uh, you know, I think um, I think I think I might be the only one uh, definitely I think from the University of South Carolina but I think I might be the only one from South Carolina on tour now so it's pretty cool to kind of you know, to be the one to represent. And, yeah. Uh, you know, hopefully play well, uh, not only for myself, but, you know, everyone around here. What, what was that transit? I mean, how did you get prepared for that? I mean, what's it like, the LPGA? I mean, you're, you're a professional. 
the rules change. You don't have that comfort of, of riding in the van with your with your teammates. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely it's different golf. Now you're individual. The only time we get to play a team is uh, mm -hmm. every two years at the Solheim Cup. And uh, but yeah, it's I mean you're you're definitely you know on your own now. It's uh, talk about time management. It's a lot of time management. Mm -hmm. A lot of traveling. You have to love to travel to do it. Um, How many weeks a year, typically? I probably play. 30? I play at least thirty, but I'm on the road. Um, you know, still do outings and stuff where I can't get back down home. But uh, you know, I'm probably on the road. You know, forty, forty-five weeks out of the year. So it's a job. It's a job. It's a yeah, lot I mean, of work. Everybody sees yeah. us play golf, and uh, and they don't see you know the the practice we put in, or they don't see you know working out, or they don't see the outings we do, and you know the parties and the dinners we do, and uh, you know, it's uh, everybody thinks it's it's all. You know, everybody sees the the best parts of it, and it's it's a lot of work. Sure. And you have to uh, you have to put in a lot of work, or uh, you know, you're not going to go very far. So it's uh, but you have to love and do it. You have to love to travel, and and uh, you know, love to play, and and I do. Well, let's start let's start on Monday. Say this is uh, tournament week, and you're playing Hilton Head. Say tournament week, Hilton Head. Yeah. I'll get what in, happens on a Monday? I'll get in Monday morning. I'll go out and uh, I'll meet my caddy. He's already walked the golf course. Right. I'll go uh, play nine holes, practice a little bit. I uh, usually work out after that. Tuesday morning, I'll work out in the morning, mm -hmm. go out, play 18 hole practice round. Uh, we have a dinner, usually a party every Tuesday night. Sure. Have to go to. Wednesday, we'll get up, we'll play a pro am with our sponsors, so ourselves and, and uh, four amateurs who have sponsored the event. And uh, so we'll play a pro am, have a dinner that night. Uh, Thursday the tournament starts, play around one Thursday, which normally takes five hours, hopefully less, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're out there two hours before your tea time and you're out there two hours after tea time every time practicing and you know, making sure it's right. Right. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, same thing. Sunday night you get on a plane and uh, head to wherever you're going next. Monday you start all over again. Unbelievable. And, you know, you do it, do, it, uh, do it seven days a week until you get a week off. Do you have those moments, and I guess all pros have it, I mean, even, you know, with my limited play, they're just days where I'm in the zone. I mean, it, you can't hit a bad shot. Sure. Every, I think, uh, every professional uh, loves those moments. Those are so short moments are, for me. <laughs> Let me add, they were very short moments. But, uh, <laughs> those are definitely the ones that uh, you want to have more of. Those, if, uh, if you have more of those moments, you're a uh, pretty good chance you're holding the trophy on Sunday. But uh, those are definitely the days that, uh, that you just love, and, you know, you love, you know, the reason why you play golf, it's just, you know, it's a lot of fun to be able to hit different golf shots and be able to go out and, uh, and play a game. And, uh, you know, but when you have those days, it just makes it a lot more fun. It's fun on the, on the days that you struggle, but obviously not as much. The less you have to work and, and think and the easier things come, mm -hmm. the, the more fun you tend to have out there. Well, you got a little challenge that, that you've kind of uh, used uh, to, to, to rally info, uh, ed educate folks. You deal with arthritis, which, which is incredible. When, when did you know that you were dealing with that? Yeah, I got uh, diagnosed with uh, Stills disease, which is a type of juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Mm -hmm. uh, I got diagnosed uh, when I was 11. Wow, so, so you knew uh, early on. Yeah, it? yeah, so it was early. It was, um, you know, and just... You know, I was uh, in and out of the hospital. It took a while for them to diagnose it. Uh, couldn't uh, really do everything I wanted to do for a while. Uh, missed a little bit of school. Had, you know, homebound come and, and teach me at the house and uh, try to keep me up, so I didn't have to, you know, lose time and, sure. and lose a grade. So uh, so I can uh, stay on schedule and uh, and so yeah, just uh, you know, it's uh, everybody thinks that you know not being able to walk as a sixth grader and. And you know, getting sick is uh, you know, as a sixth grader, it's the end of the world. You know, you feel like oh, yeah. you know, you can't go to school, hang out with your friends, you can't go, you know, play in the yard like you always do. And but uh, you know, I look back now, and it's definitely the best thing that ever happened to me. You know, it's uh, definitely led me on to, to. It's the reason I play golf. So definitely led me to you know, going to playing golf in, in high school, and then and getting the college scholarship, and meeting you know all the people that you know are so important in my life now. And uh, you know, get to do what I love to do. So definitely, uh, you know, everybody, that whole movie, sliding doors, if you go here, go there, whatever. But, uh, you know, I think my life would be completely different if I had not gotten sick when I was in sixth grade. Unbelievable. Well, you're on the board of directors for the uh, Arthritis National Research Foundation. How'd that all come about? Yeah, it's uh, quite an honor. They, uh, you know, I've been uh, trying to help out as much as I can with the Arthritis Association, and mm -hmm. uh, I did some outings here and there, and. Uh, and pretty much every state has their own chapter, so uh, each state would call me and try to get me to do outings. Obviously, I can't do all 50 states sure. in outings. Uh, not enough days in the year for that, but I would uh, 
do quite a few outings of help and uh, and so my agent was uh, talking uh, with Arthritis uh, National Research Foundation. They contacted him and uh, you know asked if I uh, you know would be interested in helping on on a national level and uh, they asked me a couple months ago to be you know on the board of directors so uh, hopefully be able to raise awareness uh, for arthritis and hopefully uh, you know bring in some money so we can uh, you know so you have less kids that uh, sure. have to deal with what I had to deal with so it's incredible so you get to go out there and champion the cause you have some insight into it as well so uh, I'm sure when you meet young boys young girls that are out there that they, yeah. they probably get a little gain of you know a little inch of strength yeah, it's from a lot you of fun. overcome it yeah. yeah I've done uh, you know with the outings always have kids come out who uh, have struggled with it and uh, you know just talking to them and, and uh, even not even arthritis I do uh, you know go to children's hospitals and you and you talk with kids who even have you know cancer and whatever it might be you know I've had uh, you know some little kids kind of latch on and anytime when you're young and you have you know that battle of something and uh, obviously mine's not as severe as a lot of the kids but uh, but yeah when you're you know having that battle of you know not being able to go to school and and you're the weird kid with a disease and all the you know mm -hmm. and uh, and so I mean to be able to, to talk to kids who uh, have had that battle it's uh, it's pretty cool to see their face light up and uh, you know so hopefully uh, you know with this and arthritis national research I'll do a lot of uh, I've already had kids contact me I'll meet a kid uh, next week when I go to Alabama that's uh, been struggling with it and uh, you know hopefully just uh, if you help one little kid then uh, it make you feel a lot better so signing autographs I mean you got some kids who are following you like yeah, look we up get to quite, a, quite, a, yeah quite a few kids that uh, come out each week and uh, yeah sign a few autographs and uh, you know take a little time spend with them and uh, chat with them and you know even if you take you know 10 minutes it, it goes a long way with little sure. kids so it's uh, it's a lot of fun to, to see that uh, see them when they smile and, and to see that you have a little bit of a positive impact on them well, who, who had an impact on you? Uh, ladies golf has, has changed so much since, uh, since you picked up golf clubs for the first time. Who, who did you look up to? And yeah, obviously uh, my dad was the one who got me involved in golf. And, uh, you know, he, he was, uh, I was too stubborn to listen to him too much about golf, but he was a good player. So always, sure. uh, you know, he definitely pushed us and uh, to, to, you know, it was never quite good you know to be really good players so um but it was a lot of fun you know having him around and, and sure. having somebody to push you but uh you know as far as golf wise uh beth daniel was always uh sure. always a big hero of mine my granddaddy would love beth daniel and uh, he was from charleston and and uh, she's from charleston and uh, so you know she was always a player on tour that i looked up to and uh pretty cool that last 2009 solheim cup she was the solheim cup captain so my first solheim cup i got to play for for her uh and Meg Mallon, who was another one of my favorites, and uh, it was pretty cool to get to, to play for them as uh, part of the Solheim Cup and, uh, you know, childhood hero. So. Well, speaking of childhood heroes, you're going to be here, you're going to be honored uh, by the Educational Foundation. I guess you get into the Hall of Fame Alumni Award. That's kind of exciting. Something like that, yeah, yeah. They say you can't come exciting. back home, but you can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> definitely exciting. They'll probably let me come back home, but, yeah, it's um, yeah, it, it's pretty cool. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a great honor that... Uh, you know, I didn't really expect, and I got a phone call, and and they asked me to be here tonight, and it's um, it's a pretty big honor, you know, just to, to be. There's a lot of good athletes that come out of Conway High, so uh, yeah. so to go and then to say that you know I I did something halfway right when I was there, so it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of cool to to get with an elite group of uh, athletes and and uh, teachers and and uh, everyone staff from Conway High, so um, definitely uh, an honor to be here tonight. And Coach, going to be here award. tonight. Coach is going to be, I heard Coach is going to be here, and, and I heard now they have a girls team, so I heard Coach and the women's team is going to be here tonight. I don't know, I might be spreading a rumor, but um, but that's what I heard. So that'd be pretty cool to get to see, uh, you know, that Coach, and who's had, you know, he had a lot of impact on me in sure. Conway High, and, uh, you know, to, to let a girl come on the boys team was uh, pretty cool of him, and, uh, you know, he's been, he's always, always been a big fan, always been a great support for me, and, uh, you know, get to see him tonight and for him to be here would be uh, special. Well, you touched on it, and you got to take advantage of it. Junior golf, it is so important to get the kids in there, and I don't know how we're stacking up on that. I don't know if we reached a peak and it came down a little bit, but it's a sport that you can take really to your grave. Uh, but uh, getting kids involved, I mean, what are you doing out there? I mean, do you see, like, some interest? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, every week uh, we have a charity for LPGA, and a lot of times it's with uh, junior golf associations or the first tee. Uh, we just played an event uh, about a month ago in Arizona that uh, – you know, was purse free. We didn't we didn't get paid for the event. Everything that we earn 
went to uh, LPGA junior girls golf and uh, okay. USGA girls golf. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I just played an outing uh, yesterday, uh, Hoodie and Blowfish, Monday after the Masters, and uh, mm -hmm. Darius Rucker and those guys, they uh, have had it for, I think, 17 years or something. That oh, yeah. uh, most, of the, most of the money there goes to South Carolina Junior Golf Association. So, you know, it's pretty cool that, to have, uh, to be able to, you know, when I was younger to, to be coming through South Carolina Junior Golf Association and have someone like Darius and the oh, yeah, guys Oh, yeah, because they were up there you. playing in Columbia yeah. when you were in school. Yeah, so it was pretty cool to have Great. them. Yeah. And, and, you know, and now to get to be, you know, on the other end of it where I can, uh, you know, help to, to create, uh, you, know, wh what, you know, whatever foundations there are, first tee, and to be able to, you know, help to, to help the kids out now. So, you know, it's pretty cool to be on the other end of it now. So, How's equipment changed the game? It's definitely changed the game. You, the guys are, the guys are unbelievable. You really can't make a golf course long enough for the guys anymore, you know. But, uh, but yeah, you know, I was watching one of the old Masters, you know, the other day, and all the equipment's completely different. Oh, yeah. And, uh, but um, yeah, we just had a rule change uh, this year that our grooves have to change to make it tougher to spin the ball, so that uh, you know, trying to make it a little more difficult for us and for the guys, you know, so that. Uh, you know, guys aren't out there shooting, you know, 10 under every day and, and uh, just dominating the golf course. So, but it's definitely uh, something new comes out every six months that you got to have. You oh, know? you got to so, have it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's definitely a change. I'm not, I'm not one to really change, but they made me change this year with the groove. So, but other than that, I like to, you know, find something that works and stick with it. Stick with it. Yeah, the, the, the whole game is a changer with the equipment, and oh, yeah. it just boggles the mind. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's, it's all changed a lot. It, like I said, they're trying to somehow, you know, make it to where the guys, it's not so easy for the guys, and, you know, they're not shooting lights out every day on, on uh, every golf course they play. So it's, uh, you know, guys hit it so far these days that it's, it's, yeah. hard, it's hard to really uh, make it tough enough for them. You remember that first time you broke par? I actually don't. I probably should, shouldn't I? <laughs> I don't know. No. I can't remember I the first should. fish I caught. I definitely no. remember the last one. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. No, I really don't. Um, I don't. I don't know. I remember, you know, playing some junior golf. I remember, you know, when I'd bring home the trophy and when I'd, you know, post some low scores. But, uh, you know, definitely, you know, remember first, uh, you know, college victory, first, uh, first uh, professional victory. I remember those things. But uh, as far as the first time I broke par. Can't tell you. Mm. <laughs> How's the arthritis working out for you? I mean, is it tough sometimes when you're out there changing the weather effect? Yeah, sometimes uh, changing weather definitely affects it. You know, some days are definitely uh, more difficult than others. But I mean, it's it's you know it's part of my life. It's you know I take medicine every day and just anti-inflammatory to kind of you know help it. And it takes a little longer for me to get going and moving than I'd like for it to. Wow. But uh, but yeah, it's it's part of it. And it's uh, you know some days. Just make a couple little tweaks in the swing if I, you know, have some don't quite have all that I want to have when I'm there. But uh, but yeah, it's like I said, if I if I woke up and and didn't have any aches and pains, I wouldn't really know what to do. So it's uh, it's part of my life, and uh, you know, you have to learn to embrace it. How about your caddy? You get to keep a regular caddy all the time. Same. same I do. Group? I do. I just uh, just got a new guy. Uh, we've only been together three weeks actually. So um, when I first went out there, I had a guy for a year. And then uh, we went different ways, had another guy for a year and a half. But ideally, hopefully, this is, you know, this is the guy. It's like any relationship, you know. You want it to last for as long as you want, as long as you can, you know. I hope that, you know, you look at the best players and they've had, you know, caddies for a long time and they've, you know, gone through the ups and the downs. Sure. So, you know, hopefully this is the guy that, you know, I'll have for the rest of my career and uh, we'll have some success together. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you so much for spending a little time with us. Congratulations Absolutely. on the award, too. Well, thank you. Thank Good you for having you again. Been a Good long to see time. you again. Good to see you. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Been out of high school in 99, and I was old then. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> keep it up with you, though. Keep, it, keep, keep doing that stuff. You make us proud. Thank you very much. We'll I be right back it. with more. This thing caught all American people in a bit. Well, so goes another edition of All American People. Thank you, Greg Everett, for letting me fill in for you this week. Can you imagine being told at the age of 11, if you're into sports, that you'll never play competitive sports again? Well, you don't have to listen to conventional wisdom, and our guest today, Kristen McPherson, did just that. We see what she's doing on the tour, week in and week out. Thank you so much for joining us Thanks here on so All much American for People. Me. Sure.